right, well here we are actually in Wall Street and like I say, it reminds me so much about the, uh, the, uh, the city of London. Over there is the New York Stock Exchange and you know, when they built these major buildings to do with finance, etc. I mean, that kind of, it's got a feel of Rome or Greece and you look in London at the uh, Bank of England and other buildings in that area, you see the same thing. Round here we've got, again, the the pillars giving you the same feel and that's not an accident this is this is architecture put there um, by design because it, it symbolizes and, and reflects something in these this network of families this is the George Washington um, the first president of the United States and the first of many high Freemason presidents of the United States for a little, little uh, Freemasonic uh, and uh, deal there. And here, Luke was telling me the um, this is where what the first Bill of Rights was signed, right? Yeah, first yeah. Bill of Rights was drafted. It was drafted. So this is this is the first congressional hall in the United States history. This is where George Washington first took his oath, and then they had to move it uh, uh, later on to Washington D.C. But this was the, the pretty much where the Bill of Rights were started, right. right here. Yeah. And, and and what's the irony there? when you've got the, the, the Bill of Rights basically having its birthplace here. And now, all around it, are the very banking uh, families, the very uh, banking cartel that has systematically removed uh, rights from the American people ever since. And they're very close to completing the job. And, uh, you know, this is... Like the city of London, it's one of the epicenters from which global control comes out of, which of course is overwhelmingly based on the control of money, lending people money that doesn't exist and charging them interest on it. And by doing that, they've been able to um, hijack the real wealth of the world by getting people, governments, uh, businesses in vast amounts of debt, and when they can't pay it back, taking the real assets, the real resources, and if people really realize, particularly the House of Rothschild, and you know, you look around here and you see different banks, and in the city of London you see different banks, you see different banks in the high street, really, if, if, if at least the vast majority just said Rothschild Bank, then that would pretty much tell the story. And what the Rothschilds have done by lending people or countries money to fight wars after engineering the wars to happen, and then when the different countries funded in the wars by the Rothschilds then, uh, you know, destroy each other's countries or whatever, the Rothschilds then lent more money to rebuild the country, and in this way, they own countries. We have this farce of, oh, we're the government of the country. No, no, you, you are basically the um, administrators of a state of bankruptcy, which they don't tell us about. Okay, but also, isn't it, isn't it contested that uh, George Washington was writing letters back and forth yeah. about the Freemasons being infiltrated by the Illuminati? Yeah, he did, there are some letters in which he, he yeah. talked about that, yeah. But, you know, um, the British the British were controlling that. All, all those wars of the war of independence. And the, the British uh, lost it on purpose because when you, when you look at the detail, because what they were doing was managing a process of replacing control you could see, control by the British crown, which, you know, in the end, people rebel against control they can see, touch and touch, and they replaced it with a control that Americans couldn't see, Americans couldn't see. And of course, you don't rebel about not being free when you think you are. So it basically replaced a, um, a tangible control with a human control. And he was the, a conduit to, to start that process. There's just one other point. Just down the, down the end there, there's a, a church. You come over here a bit, Neil. Big church. And once upon a time, the biggest building in a place was the church, with the, you know, the big tower, because the church was the controlling force. It looked down on, on society. And now the church, although kind of still a controlling force, like the Roman Catholic Church, but the big uh, controller now is the bank. The banks. And look, now the biggest buildings uh, in, in, in the cities are overwhelmingly the banks.
you know, you, I, I walk around downtown Los Angeles, massive buildings, banks, and across the Wall Street you expect to find it, but it's kind of dwarfing humanity, looking down on it, it's very, very symbolic. There comes a point where, in the words of the song, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. We'll reach the point now where this system is so stitched up, it's so corrupt, it is so targeting the, the people of the world um, in, in such a uh, abusive way that re we really have nothing left to lose because if we don't stand up now, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Bye. 